in this video, we're going to talk about atomic structure. All right? And in, in our science class, we talk about atomic structure in, in pretty much the, the simplest way you can talk about it. And to begin, we're just going to say, uh, to kind of talk about what an atom is. And atoms are the smallest unit of an, an element. Okay, so for instance, one of the, our elements, right, is maybe gold. Okay, an atom is the smallest thing that is still gold. Okay, if you get any smaller than that, it's no longer gold. It's a different thing. So you've got to make sure that, that an atom is the smallest part of an element. Okay, so any element on the periodic table, one atom of that would be the smallest amount you could have of any of those substances. Okay. And we now know that atoms are made up of several different things, but the three we focus on, they are protons, okay, and protons determine what element they are, what element you have, okay, so the number of protons determines what element you have, right, so for instance, if you had six protons, you have carbon, okay. and they are positively charged, okay, neutrons Okay, are kind of like glue, okay, and they hold the uh, protons together, okay, and they are neutral, okay, so they do not have a charge, okay, and then finally electrons, all right, and they are small, and they are used for reactions. So when two elements um, react with each other, the electrons are what's causing that to happen. Electrons cause reactions and they are negatively charged. Okay? And when you put it all together, an atom might look something like this. So for instance, if we were going to have hydrogen over here, hydrogen has only one proton, it might have a neutron hanging out with it, and then it would have an electron floating around what this is called the nucleus. And that's the basic idea of what an atom looks like. All right. And so they're made up of these three, uh, three particles, and atoms are always charge neutral. Okay, so what does that mean? That charge neutral means that their amount of protons and their amount of electrons equal each other, right? The amount of positive charges and the amount of negative charges have to be the same. All right, so for instance, we'll go back to our hydrogen here. Okay. We know hydrogen has one uh, proton, which means it has one positive, uh, one positive charge, and that means for it to be an atom of hydrogen, it must have one electron, so that it has an equal amount of positive and negative charges. That makes it charge neutral. Okay? Atoms also have mass, and that is measured in what's called an atomic mass unit or AMU, okay, and uh, protons and neutrons both weigh one atomic mass unit, so they are heavy in the atom world. Okay, and then electrons are much, 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 much smaller. Okay, they have what's called a negligible amount of mass. Okay, so their mass is so small that it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of an atomic an atom's mass, okay? So generally when we're trying to find the mass of an atom, okay, we only worry about these two, the protons and the neutrons, okay? So how many protons does it have? How many neutrons does it have? You add up that total, you're going to get the mass of that atom in AMU. Okay? Um, and so that means uh, they equal a number called the mass number. Okay? Uh, and that's just the mass of the atom, right? what we've talked about. And as I said, that's the protons plus the neutrons. Okay? 
So to finish off the video, I'm going to recreate a square of the periodic table and I'm going to show you where you can find all this information. So you can go to the periodic table and you can find all this stuff rather easily that I just told you about. Okay? So first off, we need to pick an element and for this, for this video I decided to pick iron. And iron's chemical symbol is Fe. All right, the reason it's called that right, is because it's the Latin word for iron, which is ferrum. Um, scientists like to use Latin words to describe things. All right, so now if you look at any standard periodic table, the first thing you're going to notice is on the top, there's going to be a number. In iron, it's 26. Okay, that number is called the atomic number. And the atomic number is how many protons there are. Right? Protons determine which element you have. There are 26 protons in iron, so iron is chemical number 26, element number 26. Okay? Underneath the symbol, there's generally a name for it. So, right, iron is Fe. Alright, and then usually on the bottom somewhere, in the bottom of the circle, there is another number. In iron's case, it is 55. 0.845. Okay? That number is the mass number. Okay? The numbers that are in the periodic table are weighted averages. Okay? What that means is that scientists uh, determined generally the percentage of, of what different uh, uh, atoms of iron weigh. Sometimes they weigh a little different. Um, sometimes they have a little more or a little less neutrons than, uh, than other ones do. And they made this huge average, and they determined that, on average, iron weighs about 55.845 AMU. So, um, that mass number is, is an average, and if you can use that to kind of generalize that if you have an, an atom of iron, it's going to be that much. And that's how much mass it will have. Okay? So, as you can see, using the periodic table, you can find out all this information about an atom. Okay? You can figure out its protons. You can figure out its neutrons by using the mass number. Okay? You can figure out its electrons because if it's neutral, it's going to have the same amount as the protons. All right? And you can, you can use all this information to help you in many different chemical processes. So thank you for watching.